Recording this video in January of 2023, so each of us makes New Year's resolutions. If your resolution is to finally learn programming enough to get your first job, then you are in the right place. My name is Daniel and this is my channel, Programista Frontend. Hi there, before we begin, tell me your why. Why you are here, why you want to become software engineer. And if it's just money and fame, I think this wouldn't be enough nowadays. So let me tell you my story of self-learned developer. I've had normal eight to five job as many of us. I was working as an automotive engineer. My job was to create class A surfaces in software called Isomsurf. Those surfaces were then used in simulation and production process for car companies. That was really well paid and really interesting job, but that wasn't coding for me. That's why I've decided to change something in my life and I started my self-learning path. I was doing this through two and a half years waking up at 5 a.m. almost every day and doing coding tutorials from 5 to 8 day by day actually 15 to 20 hours per week i've chosen front-end path because for me i was always fascinated what people are creating on the internet i was always pulled by good design and this visual side of the web my automotive career taught me pixel perfect approach to the good design. That's why for me that was natural choice and I went on this front-end road as a thought web developer. I'm telling this to you because I think this is really important step at the beginning. Ask yourself questions like why I wanna programming? What makes me happy in coding? So what part of coding bring me joy? Where does this coding road should uh, let me. So what is my end point? This is especially important if you have family and life experience. I was starting at 32 and I can tell you this has to bring you joy. Otherwise, it would be really hard to achieve first job in IT when you have everyday responsibilities and lack of time. There are many roadmaps for front-end web developers. You can find them on the internet really easily. They are good, but again, most of them are overcomplicating starting this journey. So I will propose you today something different for first year of learning front-end web development. First of all, HTML and CSS. Get good knowledge how internet works and how your browser is rendering simple HTML documents. How it happens that you are writing some URL and in answer you are getting document which is then rendered in a nice way on your computer screen. Try to spend your time at the beginning on learning really a lot of HTML and CSS. How long you should learn HTML and CSS? This is really a tricky question but for me this turning point was moment where I was able to replicate in my way any web design founded on Dribbble or Behance. If we speak about CSS, I can recommend you also getting basic knowledge about SAS, LESS and how to use them in your code base. There are a lot of Visual Studio Code extensions which are really helpful with those technologies. And at the end of introduction to CSS, it's good to know what Bootstrap and Talwin CSS is and what are the differences. Moment in which you will start looking at web design in matter of squares and spaces would be really good start point for switching your attention to JavaScript. If you have basic knowledge about how internet works and extensive knowledge about building layouts in pure HTML and CSS, you can step further on the path and start learning JavaScript. Don't start JS journey from frameworks. This is the biggest mistake you can make and if you don't have good fundamentals in pure JavaScript and selecting DOM elements with standard JS selectors using front-end frameworks would be really, really nightmare for you. So in the meantime, try to document your journey from the beginning. So learn version control and make your profile on GitHub. Put there every piece of code you are writing. This is really useful, not only for recruiters in future, but mostly for yourself in those self-doubt moments, which will come. And honestly, this, what I've told you, should get you through your first year of learning front-end web development. So in summary, my plan for first year of learning today would be getting basic of how internet and uh, browser works, getting basics of HTML, CSS, then try to learn SAS, LESS, 
them get some knowledge about bootstrap and Talwin CSS. Just an overview, this would be enough. Then I would jump and try to learn fundamentals in JavaScript. I will try to add some linters, builders like Webpack, and then I will try to learn NPM, Yarn, PNPM. So what are those things and for what we are using them as developers. Now you know what to learn in the first year, but let me tell you something more about how to learn all of this stuff. When I'm learning new things, I'm always trying to create satisfying, repeatable experience within it. So nothing is motivating me more than experience of becoming better at what I'm learning, actually. You would probably ask, okay then, what are the ways to create this joyful experience while learning how to code? This is boring. For everyone, it's something different. Yeah, For me, it was that feeling when something just appeared on my computer screen as it would shoot before I was writing first line of code and trying to solve my problem. So for you, it can be something totally different. One thing worth mentioning here is this pleasure and joy has to come from your inner circle. Getting pleasure out of changing for the better instead of getting pleasure in being praised is much better strategy if you want to learn something for good. If you will have this inner pleasure from learning new things naturally, you would seek as many opportunities to learn as possible. That's why when someone asking me how I was able to learn programming by being a father, husband and having 8 to 5 normal job. If it was hard, I would say that I wasn't thinking about learning how to code like that in that moment. At that time, I was surrounding myself with topics related to frontend. I was naturally seeking another opportunities to learn something new in web development. So for me, learning how to code was pure pleasure. That's why it wasn't so hard for me to wake up at 5 a.m. and code. I couldn't actually wait anymore for these quiet morning moments with myself and my code editor. Please remember though, it's not only about increasing number of opportunities to learn, but also it's about being able to correct your mistakes you inevitably would make. So that's why feedback is playing a crucial role in the whole process of learning how to code. Seek feedback and don't avoid it. This is a fierce virtue for anyone who wants to learn something. Actively seeking and welcoming feedback, be it positive or negative, is one of the most important factors for success in the long run. You remember that I've told you joy of learning has to come from your inner circle, not from what others say. This is true, but please don't close yourself for what others say. Be open for getting feedback and seek it actively. There are many groups for beginners, so actions like 100 days of code or many Discord channels are really active in this space. It's really hard to verify yourself during study and it's even danger not doing so. You will apply that special feeling of getting smarter and more knowledgeable while in reality you will stay dumb as you were before. That's why cramming through online courses it's really not a good strategy. I know that because I was doing this during my school time. I was getting good grades by learning one night before exams. But as you know, can imagine that was kicking me later on my school journey. Hammering new facts in the brains as if they were carvings in an ancient stone tablet has nothing to do with creating meaningful connections. What helps in learning is connecting new pieces of information with as many meaningful connections as possible. Always try to first think about some piece of information and then think about what it means for other contexts as well. Learner's right means understanding and connecting in a meaningful way with previous knowledge. Let me give you an example from how you can learn programming from online courses. You can go through course and being moved head by hand with instructor, you will build tiny to-do app for your portfolio in React. But this is just first step. What you are missing here are two important things. Understanding why author built this like that and connecting new knowledge in a meaningful way with previous knowledge which you already had in your head. So what can help you there? Try to start asking questions and see if you are able to answer them by yourself. For example, why author used state and use effect here. Why he used filter method to remove item in array of to-do list? Why not simple splice? You see, by asking those questions, you are expanding your understanding what just happened in the code. So you are automatically building those meaningful connections within the rest of your knowledge. Wise person is not someone who knows everything, but someone who is able to make sense of things by drawing from an extended resource of interpretation schemas, which he 
had in his head. Let's say you've decided to learn frontend. You see all of those shiny frameworks and possibilities. So for one of you, us, they can be really shiny. For others, this can be a really heavy experience. Quantity of things to learn seems to be overwhelming at the beginning, but this doesn't have to be like that. You know, what are the most important skills for frontend web developer at the beginning? Yes, you are right. HTML and CSS. And I'm not really original here, everyone is doing this. So keep it simple, stupid. You bought some course, just go through material and don't jump from one place to another. Don't collect all of those courses which you will never finish. One exception though would be moment when you will recognize that course which you already bought is not a great quality or it was made in times when people were still building layouts in tables in HTML. From my experience, most materials available on internet are good enough for beginners, so it's always good to ask someone more experienced if that video which you want to watch or buy it's worth it or not. Now you have all what you need to start this fascinating journey on becoming self-taught web developer in 2023, so let me know in the comments if you have any questions to this episode. If you don't mind, consider subscribing and clicking like button below. That's what people on YouTube are doing every day, we just smashing those buttons and watching how well they are made by YouTube front-end engineers. If you are already learning how to code and I suggest you to watch this video about how you can speed up your learning process. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.